When it comes to racing games, there's no denying that Mario Kart reigns supreme. This can all be credited to the series' many characters, one-of-a-kind racetracks, and of course, the wide variety of items and power-ups that racers can use. This raises the question, which power-ups are nothing but burnouts, and which one is capable of taking first place? I'm Kyle with 1UP Binge, and today, we're gonna figure out which Mario Kart items are the absolute worst, and which ones stand out above the rest. These are Mario Kart power-ups worst to best. First off, let's dig into the rules. There have been quite a handful of Mario Kart games in the past, and the way some of the power-ups work have changed at least once between titles. For example, the triple green shell usually orbits around the cart, but in Double Dash, they were all held in a stack in the driver's hand, providing less of a defense. Due to this, we're gonna judge these power-ups based on how they work in the most recent title they've appeared in. Next, we're only gonna consider power-ups that can be found in games that you can play from home, on a console or handheld system, not arcades. Additionally, we're only going to count power-ups that the player can actually use. Because of this, power-ups like the Poison Mushroom are going to be excluded. Only certain CPU characters can use it in the original game, and it functions similarly to the Lightning Bolt anyway. With all that out of the way, let's get this race for best Mario Kart power-up started in 3, 2, 1. Starting off at the bottom of the DK barrel, we have the one and only coin. This particular item seems to be hated by practically everyone, and there are two big reasons for it. First off, the only thing it really does is that it provides a minor speed increase, with tiny boosts after collecting 10. Secondly, many people have pointed out that there really is no reason for the coin to take up an item slot. This is because in recent games like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, you can already pick up coins laid out on the track, so having them be an item as well feels like a complete waste of a slot. The next entry might come as a shock to a few people, but the Thundercloud is next. Yes, it is true that it gives you a bit of a boost, but here's the glaring problem. When the roulette stops on it, the Thundercloud will activate immediately, starting a 10 second timer. The player doesn't get a choice as to when to use it. On top of that, the player has that 10 seconds to try and get rid of it by bumping it to someone and passing it off to them. If they fail to do so, the thundercloud hurts them by acting as a lightning power-up to them and no one else. So if the player isn't close enough to anyone, then this quote-unquote power-up is more of a problem than anything else. It's hard to like this one when the player who gets it is most likely the one to be hit by it. Moving on, we have the ever-so-light feather power-up. If its first and only appearance were to have stayed in the very first game, Super Mario Kart, then the feather might have wound up a few entries higher on the list. In that game, players could use the feather to jump a bit higher off the ground than normal. This ability could be utilized to not only avoid incoming power-ups, but to take very useful shortcuts if the user knows what they're doing. Remember, however, that we're only talking about how they work in their latest appearance. After decades of being missing, the feather returned in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Unlike its first appearance, this feather only appears in battle mode. This means you won't be able to take that many useful shortcuts with it, as the battle mode maps are in an enclosed space. Up next, we have the well-known but not so well-liked blooper. The idea behind the power-up is that after the racer launches it, the blooper targets everyone in front of them at the same time. Once it appears, it inks the screen, blocking the view of anyone who gets hit by it. Additionally, if it hits a CPU racer, it'll also slow them down a little while in effect. There is a rare occurrence where other players can take advantage of this short time by launching other power-ups at them that they won't see coming. Aside from that, however, it doesn't have much use. The blooper never really covers enough of the screen to the point where other players can't see where they're going. Moving on to the fake item box. This sounds like a really good idea. Have an item that looks like an item box, have someone run into it, and make them lose all of their momentum in the process. The biggest drawback that this item has, however, is its frequent redesigns. It seems that, over time, the designers make the fake item box look less and less like the real thing. In its most recent console appearance, Mario Kart Wii, it does actually retain the original's color until you get close to it. Unfortunately, players can still have enough time to avoid it, especially when they see that the question mark in the middle is upside down. On top of that, the only way most people will get hit by this item is when it's thrown in with a bunch of real ones. The Super Leaf is up next. The Super Leaf has only ever appeared once as an item, and that might be a good thing. Its primary function actually seems pretty useful on paper. The tail swings around, allowing you to knock nearby players aside. 
as well as deflect certain items away from you like bananas or shells. Unfortunately, there is one big problem many have with it. It requires the player to press the item button again in order for the tail to swing around. It's most likely due to this mechanic that they decided that you can't pick up any other items while it's in effect. While the effect only lasts 10 seconds, in a fast-paced racing game like Mario Kart, that is a long time. Another item that functions similarly is the Piranha Plant. This is another item that acts as a defense against other minor power-ups as well as other racers. On top of that, it also has the drawback of people not being able to pick up other items while it's in use. There are some reasons, however, that allow the Piranha Plant to edge out above the Super Leaf. First off, the defense mechanism is automatic, meaning you don't have to press any buttons for it to work. Secondly, whenever it lunges out, it also provides a small speed boost. It's able to do this up to a total of 10 times. Lastly, while it's true that you can use any other item while the plant is in effect, you aren't necessarily locked in to having it with you for a certain amount of time. You can actually manually activate the speed boost yourself. If you do so 10 times in quick succession, the plant will disappear faster than it would have otherwise. It's nice to know that if a person doesn't like this item, they can at least get rid of it faster and get a speed boost in the process. Next is the POW block. Upon activation, the POW block will instantly attach itself to all racers in front of the user, at which point it provides a bit of a countdown before detonating. When it does, it can make the racer lose their speed, spin out, and lose any items they may have had. It's also well known that some of this can be avoided, especially after having some practice. The POW block gives racers plenty of time to react accordingly and prepare for detonation. If they time their trick correctly, or if they're simply off the ground somehow, they won't really lose any speed. They'll still end up losing their items, but item boxes are often easy to come by, so that problem is usually remedied pretty quickly. In the world of Mario Kart, two things are certain, death and bananas. The banana has been in every single main series game. It certainly needs no introduction, as it's probably the most common power-up in the game. Working like a mine of swords, the player drops the banana behind them, which can be highly practical if the user has another driver directly behind them. Sure, a person can throw it in front of them to try and surprise someone they want to pass, but this can be a bit tough. Usually, the most common way for a player to utilize the banana is to hold it behind them as a means of defense from oncoming attacks. This becomes even more apparent if the person behind them is known to have a red shell. Other than that, the bananas are often scattered around the track as obstacles for other racers. The biggest problem here is that the tracks are usually wide enough that people can easily drive around them. They only become more useful when a bunch of them are scattered around a smaller area. Moving from one common item to another, we have the green shell. The green shell is like the banana in that it's also commonly used as a means of defense in the back from incoming attacks. Where the green shell shines a bit more than the banana, however, is in its sniping ability. It can be launched forward or backward in a straight line, and it can bounce off walls a few times. It can be very satisfying to hit someone far away or behind you, especially if it ricochets first. The most deadly instance of the green shell is probably when you get it to bounce off of two narrow walls really fast when someone is close behind. Things are starting to heat up a bit, so we move on to our next entry, Fireballs. To be more specific, we're talking about Mario and Luigi's special power-up found in Double Dash. When anyone who can use this power-up throws it, whether forward or backwards, the fireballs split up into a group of five. As they travel, they spread out further apart. This could actually be argued to be its biggest problem, though. Especially when it comes to wide open areas on a track, the fireballs can be very easy to avoid the further away someone is from them. Not to mention that they don't really last long before they disappear. One of the only times this power-up is really effective is when someone is close by, whether in front or back, either that or when there are a few narrow paths around. It's often said that what goes around comes around, and this can definitely be said for the boomerang flower. Think of this one as a green shell if it covered a little less distance, but could be thrown multiple times and potentially hit multiple racers in one throw. That's pretty much the boomerang flower. What's really nice is if you don't want to get rid of this item before the third throw, you can always grab an item box before the boomerang comes back. That's what gives it an edge over previously mentioned items that don't disappear after the first use. Now, this power-up's ranking might surprise some people, but the next entry belongs to the ever-so-infamous Spiny Blue Shell. This power-up is often referred to as the Friendship Breaker, and for good reason. Everyone who's played enough Mario Kart over the years has more than likely had the experience of getting hit by one of these as they approach the finish line while in first place at least once. 
with its only target being the person in first, it doesn't really help the person who used it when they're much further behind. The spiny blue shell is another example of an item that lands lower on the list because of the way it functions in its latest appearance. If it last appeared in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, it might have been higher on the list since it could potentially hit everyone else in front of the user while on its way to the race leader. However, when it came back in Mario Kart Live Home Circuit, it functions more like it did in Double Dash. It flies high enough off the ground that it doesn't hit anyone else unless they're close enough to the person in first, which is why we had to rank it a bit lower. But we can't drop its placement on our list anymore due to just how iconic this item is, as well as how powerful you feel screwing over the person in first place. Next, we have the Babam. The Babam has gone through an interesting history when it comes to Mario Kart games. At first, in Mario Kart 64, the Babam would only appear as an obstacle in multiplayer mode. In Super Circuit, it was only a character that watched the celebration at the end. It was only in Double Dash where it appeared as a power-up found in an item box. However, it was only accessible primarily to two characters, and four if you count Petey and King Boo, who have access to all special power-ups. Wario and Waluigi could get this item, and they could set it behind them like an actual mine or throw it in front of them for the same effect. Think of it like an exploding banana, but didn't last quite as long on the field. After Double Dash, the Babam became accessible to everyone. The only change made after this was in Mario Kart 8, where it can now walk around a little bit before exploding instead of staying in one spot. The Babam can be used as a means of defense like the shells or bananas, but it's a little riskier to hold on to when it gets hit, since you'll be caught in the explosion. Think of this power-up like a spiny blue shell that you have a bit of control over. Remember when we said the banana could be more useful when there's a bunch of them in a general area? Well, that's where the triple banana and the banana bunch come in. We put both of these here because they essentially serve the same purpose to some degree, and the triple banana technically replaced the banana bunch after its debut. Whereas the banana bunch had five bananas, the triple holds three. Defense is where these really shine. Both of them can block other power-ups and other racers multiple times. On top of that, both can be utilized to create a wall of sorts behind the user or keep someone further back from catching up, especially if done on a narrow part of the track. Either one of these versions of the power-up can be next to impossible to dodge. They might only slow down racers for a moment, but if there's one thing Mario Kart has taught us, it's that every split second can make a difference. But if you're hungry for more bananas, next up is the giant banana. This banana power-up slightly surpasses the others simply in its size and how it functions. The giant banana is exponentially bigger than any others of its kind, making it more difficult to avoid when put in the right place. Additionally, it's a power-up that isn't fully done once it's hit the first time. After a racer makes contact with it, it essentially pops and spreads three more small bananas in the area. This allows it to continue its use for an extended period of time. Combine this with multiple other bananas, and you've got quite the tricky obstacle to avoid. The downside is that it's a special power-up that only a select few can use in Double Dash. You can probably guess who. The giant banana isn't the only special item that is a bigger version of something else. The Bowser shell is another one that fits that description. The Bowser shell is pretty much the standard green shell on steroids. In Double Dash, where it first appeared, it can be launched like a green shell. It bounces around a set number of times off walls and such, and knocks anyone who gets hit by it off their feet. The biggest difference here is that it doesn't stop when it hits somebody. It will continuously hover around until it bounces 10 times, or if it hits someone who's invincible. If you want real chaos with this item, go to Baby Park, get the four characters who can use it, see how many you can get stored up, and launch them all at once. It'll be fun in the most chaotic way. Keeping with the theme of one power-up being an improved version of another, the Fire Flower is up next. Given how the Fire Flower has been a staple of the Mario series since the beginning, it surprises us that it wasn't until Mario Kart 7 that this flower became a power-up. It works now just how you would expect. Whoever is in possession of the Fire Flower can launch fireballs to attack other racers. While you can't launch five of them at the same time like you could in Double Dash, you can keep launching them for a short time as much as you want. Because of this, a wall of fire can be created that is much harder to avoid. On top of that, if someone is in front of you with the standard defenses of shells or bananas, you can spam your literal firepower until you break through and hit the cart. They also all bounce off walls, so if you can utilize them in a narrow passage, they can bounce back and forth at a fast speed, making it next to impossible for nearby racers to avoid. 
Next up, the triple green shell is here to showcase the concept of the more the merrier. If Double Dash was the last time this power-up appeared, the triple green shell would probably be lower on the list. In that game, only four characters could get them. Additionally, all the shells were held in a stack, providing no natural defense. Thankfully, in every other installment in the series, this was not the case. Instead, the three shells will rotate around the user, creating a shield that can deflect items, as well as knock over opponents that are close enough. The triple green shell is also another example of a power-up that can be a nightmare to others in narrow passageways. If someone were to launch all three in slightly different directions, and they don't collide with each other, it can overwhelm other players very quickly. Going from three shells back to just one, we now get to the red shell. The classic red shell may be a bit more fragile than the green shell, but it has one primary function that helps raise it higher on our list. It hones in on the people in front of you. This means that the red shell is practically guaranteed to hit someone. Exceptions to this, however, include the rare occasions of people being able to outrun or outmaneuver it, or if someone has another item that can trail behind them as defense, or if they're simply invincible. Fortunately, it can also be used as defense in the same way as other shells and bananas, and its lock-on feature really helps it to stand out amongst the family of shell power-ups. If we were able to count the red shell from Super Circuit, the red shell might have actually ranked higher because of how it can benefit the leader of the race. In that game exclusively, if a player in first has the rare chance of obtaining a red shell, they can then plant it on the track. Then, if anyone gets too close to it, it will immediately chase after the first racer it detects. A power-up that functions similarly to the red shell, but with a slight twist, is the Yoshi slash Birdo Egg from Double Dash. This item also locks on to the racer in front of the one who used it, but there are some differences. For instance, if it rolls for long enough without hitting anything else, it will just randomly break on its own. The other difference being that, once it does break, it isn't the end of its effects. Upon breaking, three items will randomly pop out. If the randomness also didn't involve risk, these power-ups would have ranked higher. After all, you might be able to get a star out of it, but you could also get hit by a bob -omb. On top of that, there's always the chance that someone else could come along and snag one of the good items before you get there. In most cases, the user will still be one of the first ones there. Not to mention that the random power-ups will first be seen far enough away that they can figure out which power-up they want to snag on their way through. Reverting back to talking about shells again, the triple red shells are up next. Once again, the more the merrier. Just like the triple green shells, the triple red shells orbit around the cart, also providing defense while driving. Three red shells also, of course, means three shells that you can use to lock onto the people in front of you. If they happen to have a defense set up for one red shell, launch one or two more and you're pretty much guaranteed to hit them. Triple the firepower, triple the success rate. Next up, we have the heart. This power-up is another one that came out as a special power-up in Double Dash, this time for Peach and Daisy primarily. Appearance-wise, the heart acts like the triple shells, in that upon activation, it has multiples of it rotating around the cart. The biggest difference here is how its defensive function behaves. Not only does it defend against most other power-ups, but it can also absorb them and allows Peach and Daisy to use them for themselves. Basically, if they get hit by something like a green shell, while it's active, the heart will pick it up, allowing the princesses to send it right back to the original attacker. Believe it or not, the heart can also reflect other special power-ups as well, including the giant Bowser shell. Cover your ears because the super horn is up next. This particular power-up might not seem like much at first. After all, it simply lets out a big sound wave, and it can only be used once before it disappears. However, this sound wave is actually stronger than it looks. Not only does it keep other racers away from you unless they want to get knocked over, but it's yet another example of defense to stop incoming attacks. This certainly includes the green and red shells. Believe it or not, there is one thing that the Super Horn can do that cements its much higher position on the list. It can stop a spiny blue shell dead in its tracks. Before the Super Horn, there were very limited ways to avoid the infamous shell, each one being highly difficult to execute. Thanos himself would be happy as the Super Horn balances things out perfectly against a power-up that is widely known and just as widely hated. You can't have a Mario list in general, much less a Mario Kart list, without talking about one of the most recognizable power-ups, the Mushroom. 
In most other games, the mushroom is known for making the user grow in size, allowing them to take an extra hit before losing a life. In Mario Kart, the mushroom affects speed as opposed to size. It gives the user a brief speed boost. It doesn't last very long, but if it is utilized well, the mushroom can make all the difference in a race. The mushroom can be used to go over most terrain much easier, allowing the user to cut some useful corners. Shortcuts are also very big in the Mario Kart series, and the mushroom can help players reach ones that would otherwise be either difficult to reach or completely inaccessible without it. If the mushroom is activated at just the right time, and the user can reach one of these shortcuts, they can make up a lot of ground very quickly. It's kinda scary that this power-up was absent for a while, but as of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, the Boo has returned to the franchise as a power-up. There have been some slight changes over time with this one, but the Boo is still a nice power-up to have in your arsenal. When it comes to how it functions in Deluxe, it's similar to the heart. It can take a random item from someone in front of you, and you can then use it against them, though there are a few items that the Boo can't snag from people. This isn't even the only thing that it can do either. The Boo also makes the initial user turn invisible while it's active, allowing the driver to avoid any and all attacks during this time. On top of that, if the person losing their item to you had a triple power-up that already depleted some of its ammo, the Boo will completely restore it when giving it to the one who sent it. Lastly, under the circumstances that there is no item to steal, the Boo will return with a free mushroom for the user. It's great to know that no matter what the circumstances are, the Boo will always bring you back something you can take advantage of. Getting closer to the end, we arrive at the Mega Mushroom. This power-up is exactly what it sounds like. It enlarges the user to a much more threatening size, and makes them invincible to almost any other attack. Not only this, but while the Mega Mushroom is in use, you get an ongoing speed boost until it wears off. Combine this speed boost with the fact that it allows you to traverse over various terrain without losing any speed, and you can definitely make quick work of tracks as well as racers. A nice touch with the Mega Mushroom is that while it doesn't protect you from the lightning, it makes it so you only shrink back to normal size instead of going tiny, which would cause you to lose more speed in the process. Hopefully, in the future, the Mega Mushroom makes a big comeback, since it's only ever appeared on one console game in the past. Hopefully, you aren't too tired of mushroom power-ups because our next entry is the Triple Mushroom. Just like the Triple Shells and Bananas, this gives you three mushrooms to use in one set. While it isn't like the Mega Mushroom, where it protects you from anything initially, it still gives you that speed boost that is always desired. Additionally, because you don't have to activate all three at once, you have much more control over where you use these boosts, allowing you to take even more shortcuts, cut more tight corners, and gain even more of an advantage in the race in general. Moving on to another special power-up from Double Dash, we have the Chain Chomp. The Chain Chomp is a very relaxing power-up in that you don't have to actually do much of anything while it's in use. The Chain Chomp attaches itself to the user, which is usually Baby Mario or Baby Luigi, and pulls them down the track at an incredible speed. As an added bonus, anyone who gets hit by the Chain Chomp while it's active is knocked out of the way, allowing the user to gain more of an edge. This is still the case for a short time after the Chain Chomp disconnects from you and continues to run down the track. The only real downside to this item are as follows. For one, if you get hit by pretty much anything while the Chain Chomp is still attached to you, it abandons you and continues on its own. The other problem the user can face is if the Chain Chomp disconnects from you while in a place with tight turns and pits, such as Rainbow Road, there is a solid chance that it will fling you to the side. As a result, you might very well be thrown off a cliff, making you lose all your momentum. Though this can usually be avoided depending on where you use it, so this shouldn't happen too often. Next, we have two different power-ups from two different games that have only one minor difference from each other, the Lucky 7 and the Crazy 8. These power-ups come from Mario Kart 7 and 8 respectively, and they do something that no other power-ups have done. Upon activation, the Lucky 7 will have seven different power-ups rotating around the cart. The user then can use whichever power-up in the circle they want at any time, when it's in the front of or behind them, depending on which direction it might be thrown. The Crazy 8 works pretty much the exact same way, only this time there is one more power-up to be added to the circle. While this addition is the measly coin, combining it with seven other power-ups in a strategic fashion could still prove to be very useful. Battle mode has the potential to make either one of these power-ups even more insane. If a person alters their item settings just right, and they get the Lucky 7 or Crazy 8, they could get 7 or 8 of them at the same time. This means that the user could be extremely deadly with something like a large circle of bombs. 
or perhaps get an even more controlled speed boost with a plethora of mushrooms. Put all these factors together and you have yourself quite the insane power-up. Coming in at our number 4 spot is the Golden Mushroom. This power-up once went by a different name, the Super Mushroom, in earlier entries of the series, and went on to become a special power-up for Toad and Toadette in Double Dash. Thankfully, however, this power-up can be accessed by everybody again. This obviously depends on what place you're in, or how far away the leader is from the rest of the pack. Unlike all the other mushroom-based power-ups, the Golden Mushroom doesn't have a set number of times it can be used. The only limit is it has time. Upon activation, the user can spam the speed boost granted by the Golden Mushroom as much as they want for a limited time. This allows the strategic use of this power-up to blow wide open. All the other mushroom power-ups from before could still help take shortcuts and traverse patches of off-road terrain to gain a little bit of an advantage. However, the Golden Mushroom takes this idea and cranks it up to 11. Because of its continuous usability, you can go over much bigger patches of off-road terrain, as well as reach more shortcuts much more reliably. It's because of this that we've ranked the Golden Mushroom as the best of its kind on the list. Taking our bronze medal in third place is the one and only star. Regardless of what this power-up is technically called, everybody knows exactly what it does. After it starts, the star will make the user completely invincible for a limited time, all while playing the famous jingle. It also increases the user's speed a little bit, but the amount changes slightly depending on the game. In any case, the speed and invulnerability from all dangers and terrains helps racers catch up. In addition to this, much like the Golden Mushroom, the constant speed boost allows for some major corner cutting and shortcut taking. And if someone who isn't invincible is trying to do something similar, and they get hit by someone else with a star, they'll lose all their momentum and will need quite a bit of time to get back on the road. Long story short, if you see someone coming towards you, and they have the star activated, stay away. While this isn't necessarily a silver bullet, the Bullet Bill takes our silver medal for second best power-up in all of Mario Kart. What happens when you take the invincibility of the star and give it the speed and traversing ability of the Chain Chomp? You get the Bullet Bill. This power-up is pretty much unstoppable and it can't be stolen by a boo once it starts. After activation, the user will transform into a Bullet Bill and fly down the track at incredible speeds. At the same time, nothing can really stop this literal bullet from going where it needs to go, even those who have a star. What makes the power-up even more handy is that if you find yourself falling into a bottomless pit, but you are in possession of a bullet bill, the bullet actually saves you. It flies back onto the track and carries on down the path for as long as it can. It does suffer one downside similar to that of the chain chomp though. If it disappears in an area with sharp turns or pits, it too could also run the risk of leading you right to a cliff. What helps to prevent this is how the user can typically hear when the bullet bill is about to disappear and plan accordingly. Not to mention that the bullet bill slows down a tad at the end, thus allowing the user more time to react to their immediate surroundings. It can save the day for you, can't be stopped, and allows you to make up a lot of ground very quickly, cementing its place as the second best power-up in Mario Kart. Finally, we've gotten to the top. And it's only fair that we award the gold medal for best Mario Kart power-up to the Lightning. Everybody knows what this is, what this does, and everyone loves using it. It's pretty much the exact opposite of the Thunder Cloud. Instead of it activating immediately upon receiving it, and running the risk of affecting the one who did, the Lightning can be used any time after grabbing it. To make things even better, instead of the high possibility of affecting the user, the lightning is guaranteed to hit everyone else in front of you who isn't already invincible. Otherwise, there really isn't any dodging this power-up. Anyone who gets hit by the lightning gets shrunken down and loses a noticeable amount of speed. If that wasn't enough, any item that other racers were holding onto will instantly be lost, keeping them from being able to counterattack if the original user catches up. A favorite strategy of ours for the lightning is if there is someone in particular we want to catch up to, we wait until they're jumping over a pit, and then zap them. As a result, they not only stop in their tracks, but fall into said pit, and it then takes them a few seconds to get back on the track before they can even move again. This makes it a great tool for catching up when in a pinch. And with all that in mind, we feel highly confident that the Lightning ultimately takes the gold medal for best Mario Kart power-up. But what do you think? Which Mario Kart power-up do you think is the best? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video, and if you need a 1-up, make sure to hit that notification bell and binge more of our Nintendo videos. Thanks for watching.